Welcome back to The Longest Journey. Alright, so in between episodes I looked at a walkthrough to figure out exactly what I had missed, and, well, the answer is I need to go to the, uh, what was it called, the cathedral or something? I need to meet, I need to meet Cortez, I think at the church, on Hope Street. It's the last thing I need to do to end the day. Also, I printed out uh, the walkthrough, so now I can very easily and very quickly find the solution to anything. So if something like this happens again, I'm not going to just run around for a bit. I'm just going to go straight to the walkthrough. And yes, I actually went old school with it. I actually printed it out. Which I don't really like doing because it takes paper and ink, but... Well, actually, no, it doesn't take ink. It's a... It's a laser printer, so it actually takes toner, not ink, but anyway. Don't like doing that, but I don't have any other device to pull it up on, except the very computer that I'm using right now to record, which means I would have to all tap out of the game, which means I'd have to stop the recording and start a new one when I get back into the game, which means I'd have to resync the audio, and it's just... It's doable, but I prefer not to have to do that, and this way I don't. Um, Hope Street? There we go. Tell me, April, what do you think about her? She's gone. No? No, she's she's still there. She's still there. She's right there. She's gone. <sighs> How's everyone doing out there? Hmm. I'm drinking cocoa. And playing the longest journey, so life is good. Let's go confess. Staring up support for their ideas. And Arcadians, those easily misled sheep, they embrace these ideas because they prophesize change. And change is always attractive to humans. No, it's not. Not only humans. The Vanguard are using a tyrant to force their changes into effect. They say the tyrant have turned to religion, that they have... Ah, the tyrant. Those beasts are not much for loyalty, but promise them money and power. The Vanguard are probably ready to offer them half of the Northlands, perhaps even Mercuria itself for their services. And they have certainly wanted to put their filthy claws on that city for as long as I can remember. Yes, it's beginning to look quite bleak. What about the girl? I think she may have seen the light, finally. She does not know even half of what is going on, and if she did, I do not think she would be able to handle it. Better she does not know. Aren't you worried that the fate of the balance in our worlds is in the hands of a... a child? A simple country girl? Of course. I do my best to help her, as does the mother in her way. Still, April will be on her own soon enough, and then... who knows? After all, she is the one. No one seems to doubt that. The balance knows, and the balance provides, and if the balance believes in this girl, we should as well. Spoken as a man of true faith. But of course, Father. You're not the only one who places his faith in higher powers. Speaking of higher powers, I have to go prepare my sermon for tonight. And what lessons will be taught today? You know the usual. Sacrifice, devotion, faith. The cornerstones of any religion. Even the vanguard seem to follow these tenets. They require devotion through faith just as much as we do. Good night, Raul. Que Dios te bendiga. How did she sneak up on that conversation? Look at the marble floor. And not to mention it's huge. Wouldn't it just be like... Oh, I hear a conversation. Let me get closer. Clack. 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 I mean, how the hell can you be quiet? Unless she took off her shoes, but I don't think she did. No, listen to that. Listen to her walk. How did she possibly sneak up on them? It's okay, it doesn't have to make sense. I think this... she did write a new diary, didn't she? Flipper can help me out. Okay, if, yeah, I've read that. Okay, yep.
Yeah, I'm definitely in the dark on a lot of things. I'm just like, uh... I don't know. It's like I'm a gear in a huge clockwork machine or something. Like I'm just a tiny, tiny part of some huge thing that I don't understand. Hey, Cortez, what's going on? It's Cortez. It's beautiful in here, don't you think? So quiet, so spiritual. See, I'm no Catholic, but I still like coming here to meditate. To pray, if you want. If you're not a Catholic, who do you pray to? To the universe. To the balance. To the rock in this floor, and, and the air around us, to you, and, and to myself. What is that, Buddhism? It's life, senorita, pure and simple. So... That doesn't make what any sense. Today? Makes no sense at all. Oh, nothing, except for everything you ever wanted to know about the Vanguard and Jacob McAllen. You got the information? You found Warren? He helped you? Eventually. It wasn't easy. But I know where to find McAllen, and I'm working on how to get there. I should be all set by tomorrow. Good news. And just in time, too. Things are not going well out there. What do you mean? The balance is collapsing. And magic is seeping through into this world. Stark is still protected by its strong currents of logic and order, but Arcadia is on the brink of war and utter chaos. I thought Arcadia was chaos. Quickly, Arcadia will fall into disorder, and Stark will follow. Can't we get help? Everyone with the power and will to help is doing so. But you are so much more important than anyone else. You can travel to Arcadia to bring order to chaos. At least until we find the Guardian and return him to his realm. What about the Vanguard? We investigate your lead tomorrow, yes? If we find what we are looking for, if they have the Guardian or know where he is, then we are one step closer to victory. But we still need to find the entrance to his realm. The mystery door. And the situation in Arcadia is not getting any better. Not without your help. I don't know anything. What can I do? By just being there, you are helping. You are strong in the balance, April. And your power flows into those you meet and helps them against the tides of chaos. Whatever you do, however you do it, you are helping. I still feel so... so helpless. I don't understand half of what you tell me, and as for the other half, I can't help being skeptical. Good. Do not trust everyone or everything and make a stand against that which you do not believe. Just be sure to accept the truth when you find it, and embrace the good in the world. I'll do my best. What are we going to do now? Tomorrow, we will visit with McAllen, find what he knows and use it. Then the day after, you will go back to Arcadia. At most, we have a week, but it should be enough. As for today, relax, be with your friends. I don't think I'll ever be able to relax again. We pay a heavy price for our knowledge, yes. But try to enjoy yourself, because the hard work begins in the morning. I will see you then, yes? Wait, wait! Where are you going to be this time? We will meet here, yes? I'm afraid I cannot go back to Venice. Not now. There are... people looking for me. The Vanguard? Yes. They know what I am, who I am. They will not rest until they have me. So we must work very fast to destroy them. Tomorrow, then? Tomorrow. Have a good night, okay? Be careful. Thank you, senorita. And you. Can actually go inside of the confessional booth? It's the confessional. It's been more than two years since my last confession, but... No. I'm not in a mood to be counting beads right now, and with my list of, um, shortcomings, I'll be counting beads for a very long time. Counting beads? Is that something you do in a confessional? 
Okay. All right, time to go to sleep. She's gone. She's right there, April. Jesus. And yes, I do actually know, I, I do actually know what she means when she says she's gone. But still, she's right there! Um, where's home? Metro West, uh... Oh, East Venice, okay. <clears throat> that woman looks like she's been put in the toaster, look at that. Looks like she's been broiled. And burnt. I do actually seriously wonder if the mystery door might be the entrance to his realm or something. I I can't remember. I really don't remember much about the game. At least I don't remember any of the specific details, really. Wait, do I actually go to bed at this point? Because it is, it's still light. Uh-oh. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, is he going to beat me up? Okay. Did he put a landmine inside of my apartment? Um, hello? Charlie, Emma, what are you guys doing here? We locked ourselves in to wait for you. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. By the way, I think Zack was spying on you guys. I caught him leaning up against the door, and he hurried back into his room the second I arrived. He's such a loser. And he seems to have a personal vendetta against you now after what you did to him, or what he claims you did last night. Gotta love the guy. So what's up? What's the occasion? We want to know what's going on with you, April. What do you mean? Nothing's going on. <laughs> Don't lie to your best friends. That's way below you. We know something's going on. There's no point denying it. For three days straight, you've been away all day. You've been acting weird and hanging around Cortez, of all people. And then today we find out you've been up to Metro Circle by yourself? I mean, April, for God's sake, what is going on? I'm just going to be honest. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Try us. We're your friends. Whatever it is, I'm sure we can help. Somehow. Hmm. Eh, what the hell. Let's just go for it. Uh, chosen to save the world. <laughs> Stop kidding around, April. We're serious. So am I. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. You're actually telling us the truth. What do you mean you've been chosen to save the world? As in, there's something really bad going down. I can't say exactly what, but Cortez is with the good guys, and I've been... drafted. Look, April, if you're having some kind of nervous breakdown, we'll do anything to... God, I knew I should have kept my mouth shut. Forget it. I don't even believe in myself. So why should you? I believe you, April. I've seen things these past few days, strange, inexplicable things. And my grandma taught us that there's more to this world than meets the eye. But if you saw them, then they did all, meet the it's eye. you saying these things. Well, my friend, April. I've never known you to lie or even exaggerate the truth. If you believe it, I believe it. And I'm sure the same goes for Emma. Thank you, Charlie. It means a lot to me. I wish I could tell you everything, but I don't think I can. I understand. When you're ready. But if there's anything, anything at all we can do to help, 
Well, don't hesitate to ask. Does he realize what he just said? He said there's more to this world than meets the eye. And he knows this because he's seen it. What? If there's more to the world than meets the eye, then it's something you haven't seen. So, uh, that, uh, that doesn't make any sense. My brain hurts. Ugh. Uh, okay. Charlie, please stop talking. There are a few things you could help me with. Great. What? Like I said, I can't really tell you very much about what's going on. Not yet, anyway. Tomorrow, after I've had a good night's sleep, I'll try explaining as much as possible. But there's one thing you can do for me. I have reason to suspect that somebody's out to get me, or Cortez. Who? Long story, but I could need some backup. These goons, these agents, they could be closing in, and whatever advanced warning you're able to give me... We'll do our best. What do they look like? I'm not sure, but you'll know when you see them. I'm sure. Anybody suspicious around, let me know. This is kind of exciting, but you gotta tell me, what are they after you for? Did you do something illegal? Not yet. Not really. It's what I might do that they're worried about. But please don't ask me any more questions today. Just keep your eyes and ears peeled for anything weird. I need a good night's sleep, and tomorrow I should be able to tell you more. But thanks for helping me out, guys. I really appreciate it. We're all hanging out at the cafe tomorrow night, April, so you're just gonna have to join us. I promise. Now get some sleep. Sorry to tell you this, but you look totally exhausted. I'm glad we had this talk. Thanks for checking up on me, guys. Sure. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night, girl. Sweet dreams. Good night, even though it's not actually nighttime. But good night. Look, it's still daylight outside. Who goes to bed when it's still light? That is not a good position to sleep in. April, your back's gonna hurt if you sleep like that. There you go. That's better. Sort of. You're kind of sleeping on the side. You might fall off. Alright, good enough. Cutscene! Uh, someone busted down the door. A cop busted down the door somewhere. I don't know where the hell that is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, bad cloth physics in the cutscene. Wow. Okay, I don't know what the hell that was, but a cop busted down a door somewhere. And there was a person inside. That's it. And then it just ended. So, you know just as much as me. Is there a portal to another universe in my closet? Where's that light coming from? Oh! Another cutscene, Chapter 4, Monsters. Well, I am ill-dressed for this place. Oh, not again. This is a dream, I really do, because if Cortez didn't open a shift, who did? And how will I get home again on my own? No dream, and I'm guessing this is Mercuria. It smells like it, like a mix between fresh flowers and cow dung. Mm. There's some kind of part going on in there. The hell was that noise? Sounded like a dying animal. There it is again. Hmm. 
Oh, do I still have the watch? Yeah, didn't this give me back before? Can I use it again? Is it somewhere? On something? No? The watch is ticking. Hmm. Okay. I don't even I don't even really know how I used it before. I'm in my undies. That's so not appropriate. There's something so soothing and poetic about the way the moonlight is reflected on the clean and clear surface of the water. There is. It really is beautiful. The journeyman. The journeyman. Very appropriate, though it really should have been the journey woman. Darkness. Sure, let's go into the darkness in my underwear. Nah. I'm not about to walk around in a strange city in the middle of the night wearing nothing but this. You know, in the future, she should probably wear... Hell, you know what? No, she should wear, like, full clothes when she goes to sleep, so if she transports, she'll still have her clothes. And she should also wear a backpack filled with, I don't know, like, food and water and tools or something. Just, just bring a whole freaking toolkit with you. Well, let's see what's going on inside of here. And oh my god, stop playing that dying animal sound. That's horrible. Well, that's a lame party. I see five people. It sounded like there was a couple dozen. Oh, okay. I guess they're in there. They're definitely having fun. It's their first date, I can tell. They're a cute couple. I wonder if romance is different here, or if the rituals are the same as back home. I mean, magic must play some part in it. Cute couple. That looks like a really, really comfortable chair. Assorted bottles, herbs, and spices. They don't look so different from farmers and craftsmen back home. It's a small world. Worlds. Small worlds. <laughs> Indeed. Worlds. Honest working man out for a pint or two. Yeah, isn't it funny how we use the world as our reference point? As like our go-to word for everything? You know, I'm, I'm the best, or, you know, that person's the best blah 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 in the entire world. As if that's everything. I guess the word reflects uh, an older time when that's really everything we actually knew about before we knew that there was a thing called space and other planets and other solar systems. Because it doesn't really work anymore. Open fires are so enchanting, romantic, and inspiring. And they're dangerous. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. Shakespeare, I believe. If I'm to find my muse, I guess it will have to be here in Arcadia. She looks like she works here. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, hello, do you work here? Do I work here, child? I'm the owner. I own and operate the Journeyman Inn. You don't look like an innkeeper? What does an innkeeper look like? Oh, I didn't know. Of course you did not, child, but... Be careful. Others may not be as quick to forgive as I am when you address them disrespectfully. I wasn't disrespectful, you bitch. Uh, I mean, sorry, ma'am. Is there a party going on? Is there a... Ugh, child. Do you not know? It is the Feast of the Balance. Have you never taken part in the celebration? Well, I hope they're having a balanced no, meal. I'm ha ha ha. Not a party person. For as long as I can recall, the feast has lasted three whole days and nights. 
and everyone celebrated openly. Now, this year, there is great concern about the Vanguard and their supporters. So this year, the Feast of the Balance is celebrated inside, behind closed doors and for one night only. There's still much food and drink. <laughs> and you are welcome to join if you so please. I don't think so. I don't know anybody here. You're not with the Vanguard, are you? No, I'm from... somewhere else. Far away. So it would seem. Well, if you feel up to it, child, you're welcome to join in the celebration. Thanks. How come she hasn't commented upon the fact that I'm in my underwear yet? That's not like a... a typical style in Arcadia, or... Mercuria, is it? What's your name? Benrima Salmon. I am the owner and proprietor of this inn. I bought it with money earned through honest trade in the Southlands. Tobacco, wine, slaves... That is where I'm from. Oh. Southlands. Slaves I'm are honest April, trade, are they? April Ryan. Well met, April Ryan. Have you come to meet someone, a handsome young suitor, perchance? No such luck, I'm afraid. I'm here more by accident than anything else. Ah, <laughs> no accident, April. Fate. Fate delivered you here tonight. You are strong in fate, are you not? What? Yeah, my fate is pegged at 10. I'm about to blow the fate tank. Too much pressure. Gotta let it out. Do you want some? Yeah, let's ask her to explain. I'm sure her explanation will make total sense. Let's watch. Here, watch. Take notes. Write that down in your copybook. What do you mean by strong in fate? You shape your own fate, and not the other way around. You are what the dark people call... Dark people? We. Racist. How can you tell? I am not only an innkeeper, child. I am a seer, taught by my mother, who was taught by her mother before her. And so it goes back to the dawn of our world. To the dawn of magic. Okay, so if I'm shaping my own fate, then it's not fate, right? Because doesn't... Fate, by definition, doesn't have... God damn it. Fate, by definition, doesn't have... Isn't under your control, right? Because then it wouldn't be fate. It... Oh, fucking hell. I should stop trying to actually understand anything that's happening. But I won't. I can't help it. What's a seer? Let me guess, someone who sees... stuff. What's a seer? A seer? Who is someone who can tell something about people? Nailed it! About events. About the past and the present and the future. Just by looking at you. When I look at you, I see... I see... What? What do you see? Most people are drawn along by events, by fate, like a carriage after a horse. But some people know how to steer the horse, to change paths at will. You are such a person, but there is more. Okay, and what is that more? Tell me more about my future. <laughs> <clears throat> it is strange. I may see many paths, but they are all dark. I cannot tell much except that you are strong in fate, and strong in the balance. You are strong in magic, too. Magic? That can't be right. I'm not... I don't know anything about magic. You do not have to know about magic to be strong with magic. If you ever learn how to harvest your talents, you will be a strong artisan. Artisan? Where have you been schooled, child? Have you forgotten your lore? My lore? 
Yeah, well, I haven't really had much use for my lore lately. The artisan is the most powerful of magic users. She is able to shape magic and to use it by force of will alone. An artist can use magic shaped by others, mold it into new magic, new art. A magician or sorcerer, witch, warlock, can read and write incantations, drawing spells from the power of words. And the alchemist can create magic potions. He is the least of the four. Anyone with proper education can be an alchemist. The other three require some form of talent for magic. Why do you celebrate the Feast of the Balance? You are a stranger to our customs indeed. The Balance? You do know about the Balance, do you not? Sure. The Balance between magic and science. I know about the Balance. The balance of all, child. Everything is in balance, and the Guardian watches over the balance and us. We celebrate the Feast of the Balance to give our thanks to the balance and to the Guardian. If our devotion to the balance falters, if we lose our faith in the Guardian, then we are inviting chaos to destroy us. This is what the Vanguard is doing. Inviting chaos. They are dangerous. What's the Vanguard doing to destroy the Balance? They are not doing anything to destroy the Balance, but they destroy people's faith in the Balance. They speak to the people, telling them how the Sentinel, the Fathers, are holding our world back. And that if we were to use the Balance to our advantage, we could return to the old ways, the ways of the ancient Earth, before the Divide. Vanguard promised the people power, and wealth, and happiness. But they intend only destruction and death. Thank you. I am at your service any time, child. I am afraid I must go take care of my guests now. Enjoy yourself. You don't happen to have any clothes, do you? I could sure use some. I'm not even so sure that the um I'm in my undies. Whoops. That's so not what appropriate. What the fuck is that? Thank you, April Ryan. What? Um what? There is no time here, but there soon will be time for you and I. Time enough to be sure. You are speaking to me, April Ryan. We have spoken. I don't understand what you're... And how do you know my name? Who are you? Have we not met yet? I was sorry then for confusing you. I will be Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Irede Council in Marcuria for a time. I think I would have remembered you if we'd met. Who told you my name? You did. You are saying your name to me, April Ryan. In this moment, you tell me your name. You question why I know your name, and you speak to me the blessings of the balance for my long journey home. Sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. It is difficult for us too, April Ryan, to understand you. We. The Venar are not perceiving time like your people. In this moment, we are everywhere. In this moment, we are nowhere. That sounds painful. But there is a veil. Beyond this veil, we are not seeing, but you have. You will be seeing. You are seeing. What veil? The veil created in chaos, by chaos, with chaos. It is a dark presence in our future, yes, future. A dark veil which hides the things that have been and will be. What's all this got to do with me? 
It was late. You were tired. We have talked in the morning when you come to visit me. Now you understand everything. Thank you, April Ryan. The blessings of the balance to you, too. Did you just invite me to your home? I will. I did. I invite you to my home, April Ryan. My home was in the Marcuria City Green, and you will find it in the morning, before chaos came. I am explaining everything, and you understood. It seems I've already accepted your invitation, so I guess I don't have a choice. That is what you said. Good night. You will sleep well. Good to know. Okay then. That was an interesting creature. What did she write? Damn, this cocoa is nice. <laughs> this is the first time I've accepted an invitation before being asked by a creature whose grasp of grammar ranges from poor to non-existent. There's a first time for everything. Okay. Well, I guess I need to go to sleep. This is an inn, so I guess you should have a bed. I really am getting tired. <clears throat> should find somewhere comfortable to sit down. Rest my legs for a few minutes. Wait a minute, I think I can sleep in the chair. Right? Yeah. Okay, I do remember something from the game. I don't remember the solution to puzzles, but I remember I can sleep in the chair. That's a weird thing to remember, isn't it? What's so special about that damn chair? Why do we remember some things that don't seem to really matter and forget other things? Oh, cutscene. Um... Uh, what am I seeing? I think it's Cortez inside of, like, a chamber thing? Or someone inside of a chamber thing. In some sort of high-tech facility. Looks like he's... A captive. I don't know if that was Cortez, but that was someone inside of some sort of high-tech chamber. And it looks like they were being held captive. Inside of a capsule. Wake up, child. Sorry, I guess I fell asleep. What time is it? It is morning. We need to clean before we open for breakfast, so I had to wake you. I slept right through the party? It seems so. You did not stir even when everyone was leaving. Oh well, I feel pretty good considering. You look... A little pale, but it's nothing a good porridge won't fix. Ugh, porridge. Nothing but ashes left of the fire now. The back rooms are both empty. It's the innkeeper. She looks busy. Not to sound rude, but I've had my fill of her for the moment. They look empty, and after last night's shindig, that's no wonder. Okay, I guess I go to that... Do you intend to walk about in that outfit, child? If it is day, it would not be proper. It's so all I have. Come. We will find something more suited to a young lady about the city. 
Wait, it's not proper in the day, so it was proper at night? By implication? Hmm. Wonder what kind of an outfit she has. How do I look? Well, it'll have to do for now. You do not have the most womanly of forms, but I'm certain you will fill out in time. With the right diet. Thanks. Thank you for the clothes, for everything. You will have time aplenty to thank me while you are cleaning plates and cutlery, child. I'm sorry. Work? Those clothes do not come free, child. Nor does a night spent sleeping before the fire. I'm not asking much, only for a helping hand in cleaning. Uh, okay, fair enough. All right. Tell me where to start. You can start carrying in the mugs from the back room. You did good work for me today, child. More than was required. Here you are. Some coin to help you out. And keep the clothes. You seem to have grown into them already. I can guarantee you that in the intervening hours between starting work and finishing work, I did not grow in any way in a, in a perceptible amount at all. Like, I didn't grow at all. So, no, I didn't fill them out. Also, screw you. Bye. Oh, what's that thing? Furry animal. Um, that does not look furry. That looks scaly. That doesn't look like it has the, a single hair anywhere on its body. It looks like a reptile. April, push the girl into the river. Look, she's right on the edge. Just push her. Push her. Holy shit, she gave me a stack of coins. How many is that? I got a whole handful of these Arcadian iron coins. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, probably like twenty or so. Hit her in the back of the head with a flute. Damn, it didn't work. I wonder if she's caught anything today. Square jaw and broad shoulders. A real farm boy. Quite a sexy one, too. It's a small wagon pulled by one of those strange beasts. That's a funny looking animal. Yeah, go pet the strange Good. animal. Beast. His hide feels like a turtle's, but softer. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Good boy. Sounds cute. Yeah. Doesn't want some candy? Doesn't want a push pin? Does it want to eat some money? Okay, bye. Alright, where am I going? Where's that guy's house? Uh, there it is. Yeah, the city green. Okay. That is an awesome house. Wow. What a cool place to live. It's a flower bed. There's plenty of room for more seeds to be planted in there. Is there? Something tells me that's a hint. It's a flower bed. That's one mother of a plant. I wonder if it's a carnivore. It looks 
to have been carved out of a large tree, but the texture of the house is more stone than bark. Yeah, it looks like it was carved out of a tree, and then the tree was made into stone. Given that this is the land of magic, I suppose you could just, I don't know, wave a wand or something and make it stone, so... It's not exactly far-fetched. It's a solid oak door. Enter, honored guest, and I would have been with you presently. Some of them look to be in English, but I know they're not. It's the Altung language Tobias told me about. The tongue of magic. Sounds a little disgusting, to be honest. <laughs> Welcome, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part, you are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Thanks for your hospitality, Obnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the uh, balance to you, April Ryan. And may what? your journey have been a long and fruitful one. Well, uh, I, I didn't think that was an, uh, the end the conversation button. I was just thanking him for inviting me here and pulling himself into the current moment, which is apparently difficult for him. Um, can I talk again, please? Okay, there we go. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the I Reed Council in Marcuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind. And so I am their sole link to humans and Domari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time. And so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one I have lived already and I am yet to live do you understand me nope I think so but how's that possible everything is possible April Ryan there is magic and there is science and between the two Everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. 
If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass, past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be created in chaos, by chaos, to keep the future hidden. All threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do. One who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent. One who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself, Obnaxus? Me? About myself? We, the Venar, are not good at speaking of ourselves. We always know who we are, and so we have no need to tell each other. Well, are you married? Do you have kids? Or perhaps your people don't marry? Yes, we do marry. And we always know who we are to be with, because our future is also our past. And so we also know our children, even though, according to your reckoning, they have yet to be born. My wife was, is, will be, the beautiful Abyanda. She lives by the Bay of Fire in the east. She gave birth to our three female children, Abratha, Abalexa, Abpalmana. How long has it been since you last saw them? I see them now, April Ryan. Do not forget I perceive time in a different manner from your kind. I have given them your regards. <laughs> well, uh, say hi to them for me. Why did you come here to Mercuria? I was chosen to be ambassador to Ired when I showed a talent for seeing the flow of time from one point to the next. I was trained for a long time in locking myself into a single moment to communicate and understand your world. My people do not normally involve themselves with others, but the veil has forced us to do so. Why don't the Venar want to involve themselves with humans? In the wrong hands, our knowledge is dangerous. To know of the possible fluctuating futures, this can be a weapon to some who flow with time. 
We cannot interfere with your time. We are not allowed. Who says? The balance. The Guardian. The Guardian watches not only the balance between worlds, but also the balance within. Time is in balance. And if this balance is upset, the Guardian would know. I thought the Guardian was gone. So he is, and that makes it even more crucial to my people that we preserve the balance and not upset it. Chaos is our enemy, April Ryan, and we do our part to keep it at bay, as do you. Are you planning on ever going back to your people? When we pass through the veil to the other side and time yet again opens up, I will return to my people. I look forward to that day. I miss my people, and it is hard to speak with your kind. It makes me tired. I know what you mean. I'm a stranger here, too. You will bring us through the veil, April Ryan, and then we can both leave this place and go home. Where is your home, Abnaxus? Across the border mountains and north, to where the forests are evergreen, and where in winter the land turns white. Do you know Father Tobias? Tobias is a faithful servant of the balance, and he is a good man. He leads the sentinel down a narrow path, but he never wavers. We are friends. So, I can trust him? Trust is a concept which often puzzles me. Amongst my people, there is never distrust. We always know the truth. But amongst your people, amongst those who flow with time, trust is important, a fragile thing. But yes, yes, I do think Tobias is to be trusted fully. I cannot see beyond the veil, but up to that point there is no thread in which he betrays your trust, April Ryan. Have you heard of a man named Cortez? No, I have not. But that does not mean I do not know him. Names are often fleeting, April Ryan. He's my... well... some have called him my mentor. Others a nutcase. I'm not sure which it is, but I'm leaning towards the former. Your mentor? He is a shifter as well? No, I don't think so. He doesn't travel. Shift between Stark and Arcadia. I do not see him in my life, April Ryan. I do not know him. Beyond the veil, perhaps, but not before. Thanks, Abnaxus. You are always welcome, April Ryan. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. <laughs> I did? And what did you answer? That I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. Holy crap, that is a ton of questions. What do you know about dragons? <clears throat> I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you, perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago. Before the dawn of man, before the divide. The Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on Earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science, and in the founding of the Fathers, the Sentinel, to watch over the balance. It is said that after the divide of the four dry kin that came to Earth, two went to Stark and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, 12,000 of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. 
Hmm. I wonder if that, um, that hollow sculpture that Emma made, that looked like some sort of a strange creature, it was sort of dragon-like. I wonder if maybe that was one of the dragons. But if it was, then what does that mean? Does Emma have... I... Powers of some sort? But, pow like, what kind of powers would she have that would allow her to... Nah, I, I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense. But then again, almost nothing in this game makes any sense, so what the hell? Yeah, Emma knows the dragons. She's friends with them. They go out partying every night. You don't know where I may find these dragon? No, the white of the dragon, the mother, has, according to legend, been sighted. The tale of the silver spear of Gorimon speaks of the mother and her child. Though I think this is but a tale, and far from the truth. The story is called The Silver Spear of Gorimon? Yes, unfortunately I do not have this book myself, and I do not know of anyone who does. I wrote that down just in case I need to ask someone. What about the other dragon, the other dry kin? Of the dry kin, I only know of the mother, the white of the kin, although I have heard tell of a god who fell from the sky into the ocean a great long time ago, but this may also be just a tale. I wrote something in my diary? Okay. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. Hmm, maybe that, um... Maybe I should ask that sailor? The old sailor guy that likes, that likes to tell tales? Have you heard of a disc that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador. He wished to know where it is kept. And what was the answer? No one at the Council knows or admitted to knowing, and the Ambassador was asked to speak with the Sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The Tyran are allied with the Vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the Sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the Tyran, nor the Vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the Divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. We are a magical people. We need the balance, because we would not, could not, survive without magic. How would I go about fighting Chaos? You cannot fight Chaos. It is not so simple. To oppose Chaos, one must return order to that which has been affected by Chaos, and thus reduce its powers. But this is not something everyone can do. Only those ordained by the balance can embark on such a dangerous task and survive. That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. 
I'll talk to you later, Abnaxus. Blessings of the balance on your journey, April Ryan. All right, I think what I need to do now is basically just talk to everyone. Especially Vestrum Tobias, but also I think the the uh, sailor guy. To ask him about that dragon that, or the god that fell from the sky into the ocean or whatever it was. Oh yeah, let's see what she wrote. Yeah, definitely need to talk to that old guy. Also, maybe that... The, uh, captain. The asshole captain of that boat, too. I'll talk to both of them. Can I go upstairs? No. Nope. Okay. Oh god, there's that thing. What is that? Assorted cargo. Hmm. Okay. It's Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon. Oh, I just realized. Funny name that is, the White Dragon. Tell me about dragons. Hello. Uh huh. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air and a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the seabed. So you've never heard of such a thing happening? Now you got it. Bye. Well, that was wonderful. Can I stab him in the eye with a screwdriver? Nope. <laughs> Hello again, old man. Eh. Eh. <laughs> eh. 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 Uh, hmm. Maybe one of his stories might be about a god that fell into the ocean? I'd love to hear some more. Sure, sweetie, I... Hmm. Have you heard a story about a god who fell from the sky into the sea? Aye, that I be having. Although that be a story of man-eating merman who ravaged the sea of songs, swallowing sailors whole and spitting their bones out to dry. Are you sure you be up for hearing such a cruel tale? I've heard worse. Uh, ye be a tough little lady, be you not? All right. Well, like I be telling yous, the sea of songs surrounding the island kingdom of Gien, be it Treacherous the sea where countless vessels have disappeared without a trace. Now, this be near thirty long winters ago, mind, during me second term as captain of the trader, Rocky Lady. We've been crossing the Sea of Songs for two seasons, and we'd yet to be seeing any sign of the dreaded bloodthirsty merman who lurk in the waters off the Guyenne coast. That night we be laying still with our sails down, awaiting the wind to pick up and carry us north to Mercuria, when we be hearing a frightful scream coming from the port side of the Lady Luck. I be the first to rush over and account of me having me arm down the apple barrel. We just been to Eras to pick up one hundred barrels of sweet Guyenne apples. And as luck would have it, I be there just in time to witness Sally Barney's Horrible fate. He be in the water, screaming and waving his arms, and the water around him be red as a midwife's arms after a grueling birth. I get the picture. Go on. 
Then I be seeing, I glimpse a large, shiny, sleek body be pulling Sally down and swallow him whole. It be the merman come to claim the body of the sailor who dare cross their sea. Are you sure it wasn't a shark? What? Big fish with sharp teeth and dead black eyes and a large triangular fin on top? Ye mean a black-eyed snapjaw? I guess it could have been. But it be no snapjaw. It be the dreaded merman of the Sea of Songs. Where does the sea god fit into all of this? Aye, I be coming to that. You see, the bloodthirsty merman be not only happy with cannibalizing sailors, but they be sacrificing their own to their dark old sea god. Actually, unless the mermen are human, they wouldn't really be cannibals if they ate humans. Blood sacrifices to their dreaded god who lives on the bottom of the sea. Aye, that be the truth of the mermen, fierce and bloodthirsty cannibals of the Sea of Songs. Uh, thanks. Good story. I... Well, I don't think that was really worth anything. I'm all storied out for now. Thanks. I... ye tell me... See you later. If I not be... Now, what the hell did I write down? Alright, so it looks like to find out more about the god who fell from the stars, I need to ask the mermen. Which are... where? Who knows? It's a lighthouse. Those guys must be part of the city watch. Well, I guess I could, I could go back to ask Abnexus. Um, I think I'll do that actually. See if he knows where the mermen are. Enter, honored guest. About my quest. Anything I... Hmm. Okay, there's no new That's options. I am glad... About my quest. Any... Whoops. That's... I... Can I ask... Yeah. Thanks, Abnak. You are... I'll talk... Blessings of... Okay, then. Let's go talk to Vestrum Tobias. Oh, you know what I could do? I could try to win back the bird. Yeah. Okay, let me save it. Now that I have a stack of coins... Hey, you! What's going on? Why didn't you deliver any maps yesterday? Um... I was sick. I wasn't around, sorry. 
Well, there are more maps to be delivered, and my customers are getting very impatient. Did you deliver the map to the rolling man? Yes, sir. All right, let me see his signature, and I'll give you your next delivery. Uh, shit. I don't think I actually got his signature, did I? <gasps> Wait a minute. He doesn't have to know. I just, I'll, I'll just go get a signature right now. Goodbye. Be right back. Be there in a second. And by second, I mean I'll be back in like two hours as I run all the way there and all the way back. All the way back. But uh, I'll be back. Don't worry.